This video introduces the basic structure of a state space observer. Previous video then introduced the concept of an observer. So an observer combines different forms of knowledge, facts and measurements to make inferences about a system state. So typically in the state space context an observer will combine knowledge of the past inputs, available measurements of the outputs, and knowledge of the model parameters or underlying system dynamics. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to propose a mechanism for using these three pieces of information systematically to get an estimate of the system state. So the context. The underlying system has a known model and behavior. So given knowledge of the input and an initial condition, we can actually predict predict the evolution of the state and of course the output as well. So this was done in the videos on behaviors if you want to go and look at it a bit more sl slowly. But take a model here x dot equals ax plus bu y equals cx then it was shown that the state evolution is given by a term which depends on the initial condition so e to the at x of 0 plus a convolution integral which contains the system input u. Now, we're going to assume that the convolution integral part is known exactly because we're assuming here that A, B and C are known exactly and we're also assuming, of course, that we know the input U. So, let's do a comparison of predicted model outputs and the real system's outputs. So, here, again, is the same equation and you'll notice that there's only one term that we don't know. That's this one here, e to the at x of 0, because we're assuming the state was not known, so x of 0 is not known. So in terms of x of t, we know this bit. We're assuming we can calculate that bit, but we don't know the bit linked to the initial condition. In the absence of parameter errors, therefore, any errors in our knowledge of x of t relate solely that's important, to initialization errors. And that's quite an interesting observation. So here's an interim summary. If we simulate a model, which we're going to give state z in parallel with the process, you'll see the process has a behavior of this form, and the model has behavior of this form. And if you compare these two, you'll see these two terms are the same, whereas these two terms are different because one has x of 0 which is not known and the other has z of 0 which you define because the model you do yourself. So assuming stable dynamics, so that's assuming e to the at is convergent, then you can show very quickly that asymptotically y minus ym must go to 0. And that's because we're assuming that e to the at goes to zero and therefore asymptotically these two terms which differ both go to zero. So here's the interim conclusion. If the model parameters and the input are known exactly then for t bigger than t1 um, and t1 I've not defined but t1 is some large t you're going to have the e to the at is approximately zero so what I should have put here is large t1 I'm not defining exactly what it is but just saying that t1 is large so that e to the at goes to zero then what you can show is the errors in the outputs of the model and the process and the states of the model and the process must all disappear so a simple observer is just an open loop model simulation in parallel with the actual process. So what we have to do, um, take our, uh, create a model with the same parameters and simulate it open loop and then asymptotically that model will have the same states as the system. But there's a caveat, in practice this will fail because the model parameters are not usually known exactly. There are also exogenous signals affecting a real system such as disturbances and we of course have assumed stable open loop dynamics so that e to the at goes to zero and therefore an open loop simulation in general is inadequate it works in some cases but in general it's inadequate because it makes no use of system information and in particular 
we haven't made any use of system measurements in order to recalibrate as required. So what we need to do next is say, OK, how can we make use of measurement information in order to improve our inference of the system states? So let's look at a slightly more realistic scenario. And you'll see the difference here is that I've added an exogenous signal V going into the process. So real processes are subject to disturbances. So now, if I calculate the behavior, you'll notice it differs from what I had before because I've got this extra term linked to the exogenous signal. So now if I compare my model output and my real output, you'll see the difference. And there's also another subtlety here. You'll see that I've got CM, AM, and BM. So I've allowed for the model parameters to be slightly different from the real process parameters. So now Y and YM are not going to be the same. So even with stable dynamics, the difference Y minus YM is going to tend to some value which is not zero because you've got parameter errors and you've got an unknown signal V. So the key point here is that open loop model is not enough. That's the key summary here. We cannot just do an open loop simulation with a model and assume that the states of our model will match the states of the real process, because in practice, uncertainty will make these differ. So what do we need to do? The parallel model simulation needs to be recalibrated to ensure it converges to match the true model states, irrespective of V. Okay, And so a logical mechanism for doing this is to use the error between the model and the system output. So we're going to recalibrate by actually saying, my model and my process have got different outputs. How can I force this error to go to zero? So this is what we want. We want the error between the process and the model and the state error between the process state and the model state. We want both of those to go to zero because Logically, what we want is we want to find x of t. And to find x of t reliably, we need z of t to tend to x of t. So what mechanism will embed this requirement systematically? So here's the proposal. We're going to form a model for which the state error is the state of the system. So in other words, we're going to define E equals x minus z. And we're going to define this e as the state of a system. And if we can def if we can then make this system so that e goes to 0, then the error between x and z must go to 0. So here is how we do it. We've got our original process. There it is. And now we're going to define our model with a slightly different formulation. You'll notice we've added this extra term here, which has got the output error in it y minus ym. And this, of course, is our measurement, because we can measure y. Now, if we combine those two together, and you'll see I've just done a simple subtraction. I've done x dot minus z dot, and that gives me e dot. Then if I combine that, you'll see I end up with this dynamic here. Now, after a very small amount of algebra, you notice that gives me this equation that there's a state transition matrix for this state E, and it's given by A minus LC. So what's the key point? Well, notice that the proposed system is derived by simulating both the process and the model in parallel, but we've augmented the model dynamics with a term based on the output error between the two systems. So that was there. We've added this term. And what we've got is an error transition of this form, and critically, this error will converge if A minus LC is a stable transition matrix. So now we've got a simple mechanism for going forward. So in conclusion, we've derived the basic structure of a state observer. We simulate a process model in parallel, but we modify the dynamics with an error term linked to the measured system and model outputs So the key thing. This is how we're using the measurement. So this is our observer. This is what we're proposing, an observer of this 
particular form. And critically, the observer uses both the measurement, which we've got, and it uses the knowledge that we have, which is the matrices A, B, and C. And it's straightforward to show that if you use this observer, then the error state is governed by a dynamic like this. And so the key thing is if you can make this transition matrix A minus LC have stable dynamics, then the error state will converge to zero.